the meaning of your life is the meaning that you create for it. And any given point in time, if it's something that you don't feel a connection to anymore or you don't want to do anymore, you can change. So many people are afraid of that because they go down a path for so long and they put so much work into it. They don't want to like step away from that. They don't want to change their minds. Things change. Change is constant. New things that you might discover might change your mind. Hello, and thank you for joining me here on Hope to Recharge podcast, the podcast that's designed to break the stigma around mental health and to create some hope and inspiration and give some practical tips to those that are struggling with mental health, whether it's from personal stories to break the stigma or some advice from professionals in the mental health community. Whether you are struggling with mental health on your own or you know a loved one that is struggling, we are here to support you and to create a community so you you know you are not alone. The road to recovery can be difficult and challenging. At Hope to Recharge, we believe that in mental health, together is always better. I'm your host, Matana. Thank you for joining me here today. Thank you for all of those that took the time to join the mastermind and gifted themselves the joy of working on their mental health and leveling up together with us in Hope to Recharge Mastermind. If you are looking to join, you can join for February. You can go to hopetorecharge.com forward slash mastermind. All the information is there. If you join for February, it's the first week in February, the first Sunday in February, we're going to do the February class. If you're looking to join, you can join and I will give you the recording for January and you will join the Facebook group and work out together with us on your mental health. This is going to be an awesome year of working together with me for those that are committed to a process of growing and evolving and changing what is now to a better state of being. This is not for everyone. This is only for individuals that are willing to show up for themselves. They're willing to gift themselves the gift of wellness. Go to hopetorecharge.com forward slash mastermind and you see all the information there or you can contact me through email on the website and we are happy to address any questions you have. If you're not sure if it's for you, we're happy to speak to you about it and see if this is the right place for you. So I'm excited about this. The first recording was epic and I am so grateful for all of you. Looking forward to anybody that wants to join if it's the right place for you. Hello and welcome to Hope to Recharge podcast. I have a phenomenal guest today that I've been waiting patiently <laughs> for her to come out of the woods, um, Selena Wasson. Selena Wasson and I never met, but we have a mutual friend. She actually was a podcast editor for one of my friends that encouraged me to do podcasting before I even started. And I reached out to Selena and we were discussing what is podcasting and what is editing and how to, how does it work? And like a week or two after conversation, I see a post online that Selena is saying, um, hi, everybody. I'm leaving for a while. I'm going to do my own adventure for like a half a year or a year. I need to take care of some things for my own well-being. See you soon. Um, I'll be checking in every now and then, but don't worry. I'm, I'm going to a good place. And she wrote this beautiful, beautiful, post. And in a way, I was very envious of Selena that she had such courage. And the other way, I was very curious. And I said, I'm going to wait until Selena comes back on air and, and tells her story. Recently, I've been following Selena a lot on social media and her adventure is not only heartwarming, but absolutely spectacular. And I'm going to get into it a little bit later, but I was so excited to see her smile and to see her come back. And I said, okay, Selena, can you come share your story with my audience? Because I feel like you have a big story of courage, strength, success, and what does success look like to you? And we finally got a date on a calendar to record this very big episode that I've been waiting. And by the way, I don't know much about what we're going to talk about with Selena because 
I don't know Selena's story. And I'm about to find out together with you listeners about Selena's story. So Selena, thank you for joining me here today. Of course. Thanks for having me. Thanks for um, waiting until I came back. <laughs> it was a long six month journey. I think it was even longer. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think it was longer because I've been following you with your traveling for the last few months. But I think for six months, you were in like finding yourself mode and disconnecting from social media. So so yeah, it's been a, a longer than six months. So Selena, I want to give the audience a little bit of a background um, and myself, actually. Um, first of all, you're very young. How old are you? I am 25. You see, oh God, she's so young. She could be my <laughs> daughter. She's so young. And where did you grow up? I grew up in Colorado, um, between Monument and Colorado Springs. It's kind of like a small little town next to the mountains. And then Colorado Springs is kind of like the bigger city, um, kind of uh, south of that. Mm -hmm. And I went to a very small school system. Like everyone knew each other. Everyone grew up in the same area, so we all were very tight knit. And uh, when I was around 18 years old, I finally moved down to the Springs, which is like the bigger city. And that's kind of when I was discovering myself and getting away from like my roots and kind of going on my own personal journey. Do you have siblings? I have two half sisters. Mm -hmm. um, I actually didn't know they existed until I was around 20. So I kind of grew up thinking that I was the only child. <laughs> mm. I was 20 years old. So that was a really interesting surprise. But yeah. yeah. I used to have sisters. Who raised you? Um, my mom. And uh, I did have a stepdad at the time until I was about, I want to say 12. And then uh, they did go through a divorce. So I had my mom until um, my teenage years up until now, of course. But yeah, it was a, it was a very interesting uh, childhood. Yeah, it sounds like it. So when when you ended high school, where did you go after? Uh, when I ended high school, I was supposed to go to college. I didn't. I honestly didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. So I told myself I was taking a year off and I ended up moving in with some of my coworkers at a job that I had. And um I actually experienced what it was like to be an adult. We got our first apartment and we were able to uh, kind of do the whole roommate situation. And I was kind of like that typical, like 20 something year old with their first apartment. You know, you, you only have enough for bills. You're like struggling, you know, for food and stuff like that. And that really taught me um, like how, how it is in the real world. That was my first like real world experience. Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy it? Looking back on it now, it was actually very, it was very good. It was a very good experience for me. It really taught me the importance of budgeting. It really taught me the importance of um, how to save money and how to, you know, really pick the people you surround yourself with. Because I did have a lot of like friendship issues at that time as well. Um, my early 20s really taught me a lot about people. Mm -hmm. I was around a lot of people. I was around a lot of people who were also connected to me and my financial situation as well. Um, and I really learned a lot about like, hey, I need to really choose the people I hang out with. I really need to choose the people that I associate myself with because that will have a direct impact on me. So yeah. um, I, I kind of had to go through the hard way and like I had people who, you know, weren't the best of friends. I had to learn from that. I had the people who, you know, um, were secretly you know, not rooting for me, secretly doing other things. I had to go through that. And it really taught me that everyone isn't who they seem. It's very face value. But now that I'm older, I'm really appreciative of that because I kind of take those lessons from back then and apply it to my life now. It seems like you grew up very fast. I don't know many 20-year-olds that have such awakenings so early on. Usually it takes them five to 10 years to discover what's really going on and then go through some trauma and then start working on themselves. You started really young. Did you have mentors in your life? Did you have something to like a to role model? Um, no, I had myself. I was an only child. Um, I did have a very troubled teenage year, uh, little bracket. Um, I ended up running away when I was 17 years old. Uh, my mom and I weren't the best of friends. We were having a really difficult time and, um, I came back, um, but I just wanted to leave 
um, her house really badly. So I ended up moving out when I was 18 and um, I was kind of on my own. Everything that I did after that, I really learned through experience. It was only me to rely on. So I went through this phase when I was a teenager that I absolutely hated myself. But then when I got out in the real world, I was like, I got to work with myself because I can't, I can't get through this if I'm, you know, constantly beating myself up, if I'm my worst enemy. So I kind of had to start at that point to really get to know myself because I was making decisions on like where I was living, who I was living with. I had to have uh, that kind of relationship with myself to make those best decisions. But I didn't really have anyone to uh, mentor me because I didn't really have the best relationship with my mom. Um, I had like kind of shady friends at the time. So I was I was kind of winging it. And it's weird because I, I look back on like everything that I've went through and I wouldn't be where I am now if I didn't even kind of like jump off the bridge and just go for it, which is super crazy because I didn't know what I was doing at the time. It's actually jaw dropping because a lot of teenagers or people that are, don't have mentors nowadays go to self-destruction. I know this is a huge statement and, and, and judgment, but I'm, I'm saying if we don't have role models, even as adults, it's really hard to find the road to finding ourselves versus destroying ourselves to going to drugs, alcohol, bad relationships, abuse. I don't don't understand how you did it so fast and you chose, you really <laughs> chose growth instead of destruction. And I, I would love to share with the audience, like, what was that, that you chose? Like you basically chose, you had a decision and you chose good versus destruction. How did that play out in your mind? Was it always so easy and visual to you and clear? Definitely not. I did have a phase of destruction that happened from, I want to say the ages of 20 to, well, 19 to about 21. And that was when I had my first apartment with uh, my friends, my coworkers, and we did party a lot. We did drink a lot. I never really felt like that was the right decision, but I kind of went with it because those were the people in my immediate friend circle. Uh, and it weirded me out super quickly. I didn't know what I was doing. I had just moved out of my mom's house. I was just living life. I wasn't really thinking about really my future or anything else. And it got to the point where I was at my job and I was really exhausted and I was really run down. And um, I've already always had this like really internal voice and I'm very internal. I'm a very internal person. So um, my internal voice is very strong. It mm -hmm. took me a while to kind of flip it from like self negative thoughts and um, kind of perspective to positive. Mm -hmm. uh, but my breaking point was one day I woke up for work. I had the worst headache I've ever had in my life, like migraine. And uh, I hated my job. It was horrible. And what were you doing? Um, I was working at a Walmart mm -hmm. and uh, it was classic retail, you know, very rude customers, very, mm -hmm. very long shifts, mm -hmm. um, overworked, underpaid. But I woke up and I had the worst headache and I was just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was dealing with depression and um, other things that had stemmed from my teenage years because I didn't really deal with them. I kind of just masked them up. Uh, and they were coming to the surface all at once. Everything just like hit me at once. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I'm tired of living like this. I'm tired of having this life where I'm not fully happy. I'm not truly happy. Kind of felt empty inside. By the time I was 21, I was like very, very just sick and tired. And it's weird because I was so young and I knew what I should have been doing, but I wasn't doing it. And I was like, I need to make a change. Mm -hmm. So slowly but surely, I started changing things in my everyday life. And um, that social media break that you talked about where I was gone for six months, that was like the second time I had done that. So when I had turned 21 and I made that decision back then, I actually left social media for 100 days for the first time ever. That six month break was actually the second time I did a social media break. I found that disconnecting and kind of looking at my life because social media has such a huge impact on your perspective and influence on your thoughts, you don't really realize it. Mm -hmm. um, so back then I decided to take a 100 day social media break 
And I took a microscope to my life and I was just trying to figure out everything that went wrong. I dove into like trauma from my teenage years. Um, I adapted meditation, which really like unearthed a lot of things that I didn't even know were like still lingering. I did a lot of internal work. I journaled every day. I did meditation. Um, I took long walks in my park and I just left myself with my thoughts because I'd always been around people, you know, living with roommates. It's really hard to kind of get to that level when you're always around someone and Mm -hmm. they're talking to you and they're always conversating. There's always people over. A lot of people don't have quiet time. And that quiet time is very helpful when you want to really get to the bottom of yourself and get to know yourself or solve something in your internal life. And I started quieting things down. And when I did that, I just started this whole entire journey of figuring out who I was, why I am the way I am. I was figuring out trauma that I had, you know, forgotten about and uh, other things. I wanted to ask you when you were doing all this figuring out and this deep diving, did you, you still continued in Walmart? You were in the same apartment or did you change everything all at once? It was, it was over time. It was over time. Uh, The first thing I wanted to do was get out of my job Mm -hmm. and get out of my living situation. Mm -hmm. Um, I had to wait until my lease was up to get out of my living situation with the person that I was living with, um, one of the uh, girls that I knew. And my job, that took a really long time as well. Um, But I had to deal with my circumstances. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I kind of made a list at the time of things I can change and things I can't change. Mm -hmm. And um, my living situation, my job were two of the things I could change, but I knew that would take time. So I was very patient with that. I just worked on my mindset. There was a lot of negative people around me. And I I actually was just really working on maintaining my own um, mental clarity. When you're around people who are really negative, it's very easy to pick up their mindset their, their talks, uh, how they, how they talk to themselves, their outlook on life, if you're not careful. So I really, at that time when I was waiting for all that stuff to change, I just kind of built a mental barrier and kind of built, um, up my self-talk and positivity until then, because I knew nothing was going to change if I went into a different living situation, if I let, went into a different work with that same mindset. So that was the most important thing for me. And I knew that the rest would come after that. So you basically, lived in the same situation, but you were changing within. And I think that is such a powerful lesson for my audience. And for me, a lot of times we think that we don't like what's going on in our lives and we have to change. So we have to move, we have to change jobs, but you did it the opposite way, which is the real way. Go first within, stop trying to change everything around us. And uh, you know that that saying nothing will change until you do. And, yep. it's, and, and you actually did that. You actually <laughs> did that. You stayed in the same job This and you knew that it was be a byproduct that those things will change once you change. So you yeah. said, I'm going to start changing instead of finding a job, finding a new place, finding a new environment, finding new friends. You said, okay, fine. First, look inside. What needs to change inside me? And then once I do that, everything falls into place. And you were so patient. You were so, (laughs) I can't even believe what I'm hearing. You're 21 years old with no mentors doing all this internal work on your own and knowing the steps to take. I don't, I, I'm like in shock. I I was winging it. (laughs) But you knew, you really knew what you were doing in a way. I'm just curious, like, did you read a book? Did you have, a online video that you said, okay, this is what's going to this uh, aha moment. Like what was it mm-hmm. that, ha- what was your GPS at that time? So young. I did have um, the start of that process was when I really got into spirituality and um, discovering myself, and my power. And that's when I actually started like getting like guiding signals and points of what to do to like take my power back. So not only did I know that I had to like change my life internally first, I knew that I had to like educate myself and like take my power back. So I was reading a lot of books. I was listening to a lot of videos on just like self-discipline, self-awareness, emotional 
intelligence, a lot of articles. I would stay up in my room. Um, my roommate would have parties in the living room and I would just not leave my room and I would just be like looking online at emotional intelligence articles and like stuff to do that um, will help sharpen your mental clarity. And I was really getting into meditation. I was really diving into like some Buddhist Zen practices as well, breathing techniques and um, ways to really like kind of reduce like mental fog and things like that. So I was diving into uh, that kind of lifestyle. I was very, very in love with like the idea of Zen and taking things slower, getting more clarity and kind of like diving within. Uh, so those were the things that I was picking up and studying. And I had a very, very hard time adapting it to my life because it requires so much digging and it requires so much discipline. It's very scary, like the things that I had to deal with in meditation because I'd never really been alone with my thoughts as in the pr in the present moment and um looking at my life and the way it was just like falling apart it was very scary to me and i didn't want to deal with it i did anyway i was like this is my life it's it's falling apart my body is like pretty much falling apart too i have a really bad job i don't really have any good friends it was really hard for me to like look at that but i just had to uh i just kept doing it and it was hard i would cry sometimes i would cry a lot actually <laughs> just because I was so sad with my, my current state. It was hard. It was really hard. Uh, what, but what kept you going? The, the knowing and the want of me having a better life. I knew that if I stopped, my life wouldn't change. And I knew if I kept going, I would make progress. And I just was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I wanted things to change so badly, so badly. I was willing to do whatever it took because I knew like my potential, but I knew I was holding myself back. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, if I can just get my ducks in a row, I will be okay. Like I can do this, but there was so much crap I had to like shovel through. Mm -hmm. And it took me such a long time because I on for social media and I was doing all that, all that work. And I was just like a hot mess. No one knew because like I didn't I didn't update on Facebook or anything. But I was I was going through a lot of stuff, shoveling through a lot of like dirt that was in my life. And I was just like, if I can just get to the other side of this, I know I'll be okay. I can feel it. Because I was already doing the work and I could just like see some results. And they're not instant, but it was in the form of like my thoughts. I would wake up because when I used to wake up when I was working at that job and I would cry because <laughs> I just did not want to go there. Mm -hmm. Things were just bad. But I started to wake up and I was starting to kind of have a more positive outlook on life. Mm -hmm. I looked out the window and I was like, man, it's a good day today. And then, you know, I was driving to work and I was noticing, I was like singing along to some of the music and I was kind of feeling good. And then I would go into work and I'd be like, oh, those are like some nice flowers in the garden set. I like like small things like started happening mm -hmm. and my mind my mindset was like starting to like slowly shift over and I would be in situations at work where people would be yelling at me and I was like man they're upset instead of like internalizing that and being like oh, I hate this job people are yelling mm -hmm. at me like every everything in my internal dialogue like started to change and then when I would go back to meditation and I would kind of like reflect I'd be like wow whoa like this isn't the same, you know, mindset I used to have. Like this mm -hmm. is actually a lot more peaceful. It's a lot more positive. And I started feeling better. And I was like, Ooh, I'm seeing results. <laughs> and like wow. the results actually kind of made me, you know, it, it fueled me to like keep going. And then by the time I was 22, 23, I met my boyfriend who I'm dating right now. Mm -hmm. um, he's been a huge help. And I also kind of came out of my shell. I started doing my entrepreneurship stuff. And I started, you know, getting out there and starting my businesses and I did my podcast. And that's when I was really able to take everything that I learned and, you know, put it out there in the outside world and start like messing around with things that I wanted to do from a way healthier mindset. Mm -hmm. And that's when everything really changed. And fall into place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have so many questions now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> First of all. I know that once things start to shift and we start seeing results, it gives us momentum to continue even when it's hard. But that first, first desire of 
not being where we are now to actually implementing is the hardest stage. Mm-hmm. I I speak to so many people that have the desire and blame everything around them. In a way, they know that they can change and in a way they know what they need to do for change, but they can't actually do it. What do you think you did? And what do you think your gift was? To You did it alone. You didn't have a therapist, right? Mm-mm, no. You did it alone. Mm-hmm. No support system, no no one to hold you. What do you think that was that held you and helped you take that one first step, that one leap of faith, that one move to get out of bed and say, okay, fine, I'm going to be mindful. I'm going to look for positive ideas. I'm going to read positive books. I'm. I, what was that? Because I feel like that is the biggest challenge that people have when they blame everything around them and their 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 surrounding their lifestyle that everything but they can't do the work within themselves yeah definitely um well i would have to say i kind of skipped over this part i didn't really mean to but now looking back i i did go through a deep depression when i was 17 um and i did try and attempt suicide three times i was in a very very bad place like rock bottom so by the time i was in my 20s and i was working on myself um, I, I remembered that that feeling of feeling so worthless, feeling so down, feeling like I didn't want to live anymore, and I didn't want things to get that bad again. Uh, I was I was really scared of that because those thoughts never actually go away. You just choose other thoughts instead. I realized because those thoughts will always kind of be there. Um, it's just like the the ones that you feed, the thoughts that you decide to take in that day, you know, and I was trying to take more positive thoughts because if I kept taking the dark thoughts, the thoughts that my life wasn't going to become anything and kind of go down that depression hole, I knew like that outcome already. Mm -hmm. So that was something that really, really fueled me. Like I did not want to go back to that place. I didn't Mm -hmm. want to step backwards into that darkness. And I I knew what it felt like. Um, There's something that I heard like, you really have an appreciation for, you know, your, your happiest moments when you've been through your like darkest times. Like, yes, there's there's a very, um, there's like a, like a balance between like your darkest times and how sad you felt to like your happiest times. Cause you've known what it feels Mm -hmm. like be like in the depths. And uh, that's where I was really coming from because I, I knew what it felt like. And I was like, I don't want to go back to that. Like, I actually d- legitimately want to be happy. And I feel like some of those people who want to change and who want to do better, everyone has their own motives. Everyone has their own thing that's driving them, their mm-hmm. why. And what I've learned is if your why isn't really, really strong, if it's not really, really resonating, if you really don't want to, if you're not willing to do anything it takes, risk it all to do whatever you have to, to change your life, you're probably not going to stick it through. Mm. I had been through a lot mentally to the point where I was just like, nope, I'm not going back there. I don't care what I have to do. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm actually like starting to, you know, see the potential that I can have and like the rewards that this world can give me and like what I can do with myself and how I can help people. I I don't want to go back there. So that that was something that really really fueled me. People who haven't gone through certain things or if their why isn't really stable, if it's not the foundation of why they're doing what they're doing, I I see it a lot, you know, they're not really they don't really go through with it. Mhm. It's so true. It's so true. First of all, what you said about when you experience deep sadness, your joy is just that much greater when you experience it because the contrast is so greater. I always say that my joy today, I would never be able to acquire if I didn't go through my depression. Never. There's Uh just a different level of experiencing life and everything. The most mundane moments in life become a treasure and exciting. And people always say, uh, many times people say like, what are you on? I'm like, I'm on (laughs) literally on recovery, the joy of recovery, the joy of healing. That's what I'm on. I'm just like loving life. And I'm loving the fact that I'm feeling okay. That's it. That's it. That's just it. And we worked so hard to get here. So Mm -hmm. I, I totally agree with that. 
would like to take this opportunity to pause for a second and give a big thank you to our sponsor, BetterHelp.com. Have you been thinking of getting therapy for a while, but you live in a place that doesn't have therapists that meets your need? Or are they too expensive for what you can afford and you really want to get help and therapy? Or do you travel a lot and you can't access the therapist when you travel? Or do you come home from work and you're too it's too late to go to an office for therapy? Well, BetterHelp.com is an online platform for therapy. You can access thousands of therapists and choose from the therapist that meets your need. Go to BetterHelp.com forward slash hope to recharge. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com forward slash hope to recharge to receive your 10% off on your first month. Take charge of your wellness. Go try them out. They really try hard to match you up with the specific therapist that will meet your need. Don't wait to get help. Go now, betterhelp.com forward slash hope to recharge. You can access them from your phone, your tablet, your computer. You can be in your bed and you can receive your therapy you need. Don't wait longer. Now, enjoy the rest of the episode. I admire the fact that you knew your why so early on and you were determined to not attempt suicide again. What was that that you said, I'm not going to, you did it, you, you attempted suicide three times. What made you say not a fourth? And, and my second part of the question was, were you upset after all three times that you were still alive? And you're like, shoot, now I have to deal with life. Yeah, I was upset. I, I kind of did it in a way that was just kind of like, you know, a very, it was a very emotionally charged and I would calm down and I would just be like, oh, I don't want to, I, I would like kind of, it was kind of like, like a blackout, like emotional, like rage. I just didn't want to like deal with my life anymore. I didn't want to like deal with, you know, anything anymore. Um, first time I tried was with like pills. The second time I tried, I actually tried to like, <laughs> It's hard to explain, but I was outside. I was just trying to like jump from a really high place. Uh, that that didn't like work. I actually really hurt myself. And my mom didn't really, you know, I, I kept it all from her. Now we've talked about it and everything. I wasn't like angry or upset that it didn't work. I was just angry and upset at myself that I was even like in that mental state to even like go through with that. Because when I was trying to do it, it was always a battle in my head. Like, don't do it. No, do it. Just do it. No, do it. I had those two voices in my head. Um, and then, you know, by the third time, I was just like, we're not doing this. Like, mm -hmm. this is hurting more than it's helping. I don't want to be like this. I've always had, you know, my deep depression. I've always had like those voices like, hey, it's going to be okay. And like, hey, it's not going to be okay. But by the end of the third time, I was just like, okay, this isn't working. We're not, I'm not, I'm not feeling any better. I'm not getting any better. Um, and that's kind of like when I was just like kind of sitting with myself, I would sit with myself in my emotional distress instead of like doing something. So that's when I kind of was like, I was, I was very young. I was 17. I was still going through all that stuff, but my urge to like take my own life was starting to fade because I just didn't, that wasn't an option for me anymore. I didn't seem like very... It didn't seem like the best choice at the time. So I'm, I'm happy that none of those attempts actually fell through or actually fell through and they, they didn't actually, you know, actually end up taking my life. But I was just, I just needed to sit with my emotional distress for a while instead of going straight to action and getting like built up. And I think that was the start of like me actually facing my emotions, like sitting with them. And evolving and doing the work and showing mm -hmm. up and focusing on the next step. Like I feel like in mental health and recovery and healing, it's really hard to have a goal. The goal, yeah. the goal should be taking the next step, not healing. Mm -hmm. Because if we look at that a big, big distance between where we are and healing, it could be so discouraging. But when we just look at the neck step, and that's what you were doing, basically, you just said, okay, I'm, I'm in an unhealthy environment. I'm with a roommate that's making a lot of noise and parties and negative in a place that I don't want to be, but that's not going to affect me. I'm just going to surround my mind which is my treasure and no one can take my mind away. And you mm -hmm. took control over your mind that yes. that mind took control over your emotions and that where the, that's where the work happened. And I can't express enough how you did the work that mentors throughout the world are trying to talk about and, and teach. And you just did it on your 
own. And I just, I'm, I'm in absolute, I, I think you could see how I'm in awe of it because you really did it on your own with your mind and you didn't blame anybody around you. You just took action and took responsibility and you started chipping away one moment at a time, one moment at a time. And then you chose to see the improvement. You chose to see how far you're going versus how far you have to go. You chose to see the healing process versus the illness that's still there. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, your gift for recovery. I really believe that that was your big gold nugget in your journey. I I definitely agree. And now, you know, now that I've taken my other social media break um, after um, I was doing my podcast and my businesses and everything, uh, I, I only did that for even more mental clarity because I was kind of kind of slipping up, kind of overwhelmed with a lot of things, getting into the business world, getting into that next level. I wasn't as clear as I wanted to be because I knew like whatever I gave my heart and soul to, my time to, it had to be the one. It had to be it. And when I was in my businesses and my podcasting, um, I really did enjoy it. But there was still a part of me that was like, is this what I want to do? And that clarity wasn't there. And mm-hmm. so that's when I took my other social media break that I came back from in June. Right. And um, when I came back, I had spent so much time just trying to gather my thoughts on hype and in nature that I didn't even realize I was really like starting to fall in love with it. I would go into nature. I go on hikes. So I live in Colorado. So we're right by the mountains. There's beautiful, beautiful scenery everywhere. And I would go on these hikes and I would just kind of like kind of clear up my mind, kind of just admire everything around me, try and be more present, try and be more aware. I quit trying to look for the answer because I was just like, is this what I'm supposed to be doing with my life? And I would just like walk around with that and I wouldn't Mm -hmm. get an answer. And it was just because like I wasn't ready for an answer, I think. And like when you stop looking for it, it comes to you, Mm -hmm. (laughs) as weird as that always is. So I, I quit doing that. And I just really tried to focus on the present moment. And like I fell in love with hiking and with nature and the way it made me feel without even realizing it. And when I really started to turn inward, I was like, this is so like rejuvenating. It's so healing and it makes me feel so good. And I'm seeing so many beautiful things. My mind, my mind shift just like changed again. I was mm-hmm. just like, wow, because I believe, you know, the, the meaning of your life is the meaning that you create for it. And any given point in time, if it's something that you don't feel a connection to anymore or you don't want to do anymore, you can change. So many people are afraid of that because they go down a path for so long and they put so much work into it. They don't want to like step away from that. They don't want to change their mind. It it looks like, you know, you're, it looks like you're giving up. It looks like you're quitting, but honestly, things change. Change is constant. And new things that you might discover might change your mind and new things that you might come across might change your outlook. And I was willing and accepting to that change. And here I am in the middle of nowhere, you know, taking my hikes in nature. And I'm just like, wow, this is great. This is something that I want all the time. And I started spending more time in nature and I started taking lessons from it. I started taking lessons from the mountains and like the water and the rivers as weird as that sounds, but like, I would really tune into that. Like, what are you trying to teach me? I became very spiritual in that sense. You know, nature always has something to teach you. I'd always tried to go in nature all the time, but I was always too busy when I started making time for it. um, That's when things really changed. And now I, uh, I can't, I can't not (laughs) go outside like every day or every week and, you know, have my outdoor time. And I truly fell in love with it. It was, it was a great feeling. And I was like, you know what? you know, it's okay to change. It's okay to change my mind. It's okay to go on a different path and a different journey because that's how you find what you're supposed to do. You're supposed Mm -hmm. to explore, Mm -hmm. supposed to explore everything and, you know, experience things. That's how you really get exposure. One of the things that I love when I see your post that every single one is in the most beautiful scenery ever. Like (laughs) I'm in awe of that scenery and you choose to be with it versus to say I'm too busy for it. You invite it into your life. You make time for it. And I admire that and I respect that. And I, and I think it, the, I think part of the reason that you came so far in life is because you make time for what makes you feel good versus giving Mm -hmm. excuses 
is why you can't make time for what makes you feel good. You know that nature makes you feel good. You know that a good hike, you guys, you have to go check her, her Facebook out. You don't understand these, these <laughs> stunning sceneries that she goes almost every day. And sometimes she meditates there or she comes up with an epiphany or, and she does it on her own. It's not like she's like, oh, let's go on a hike. She goes with herself, with her mind, with her energy. And she goes on this spiritual hike in this most beautiful scenery. And you can actually feel the energy that she's bringing back to the world. It, I honestly say it, that it's so, so beautiful. And, and in a way, I was envious of the fact that you gave yourself permission to enjoy what is so accessible, so at the tip of a fingers is nature. Mm -hmm. And you invited it into your healing moments, into your mm -hmm. spirituality and your growth. And, and you're looking to learn from it. You know, I always say we're so lucky that we live in this day and age that there's so much free stuff online that we can access and spirituality and growth and depth. But Selena went outdoors. She didn't go to the <laughs> internet. She just went to what is there for so many years, thousands yes. and thousands of years, and just connected to what is a waterfall trying to teach me? What is the sound of a water meeting the rock? What is the mm -hmm. depth of it? What is a drop? What is many drops? What is height? What is pressure? What is a stone? Yeah. What is trees? What's snow? She hikes a lot in snow because she's in Colorado. As so she's hiking in these beautiful, beautiful mountains, and she's taking it all in and learning from it and inspiring herself and growing. I think you are gifted. You are really gifted mm -hmm. and you are deep and you are lucky that you came this far with yourself. Like you really did the work on your own. I don't know. I still don't know how you did it because I know my depth of pain and I know that I would not be able to do it without a community. I always say together is better. You did, your together was yourself. You loved yourself so much and you knew that you have what it takes to heal, that you were able to connect yourself and say, we are doing this together, me, myself, and I, <laughs> mm -hmm. my, my mind, my soul, my spirituality, my mindset, my desire, my actions, we're going to do this together. That was your together is better. You know, you yeah. just put everything of yourself into this goal of healing and, and, mm -hmm. and moving the needle. Yeah. I, I, I want to ask you if you're willing to share with us, what is your why? I would say I've I've been I've been through a lot and I I've, I've been through the rock bottom parts of my life and I've seen like how my mind can can be and how it can turn into uh something that's an enemy of mine and um other experiences have taught me you know be very wise with who you hang out with you know and my boyfriend's helped me tremendously in some of these lessons as well my why is that for me going through all of these difficult things and sharing them with people, I just want other people to know that you, at any point in time, you have the power within yourself to completely change your life. Any point in time, whether you decide to embrace it or not embrace it is up to you, but you have that power, whether you think you have it or not, and you have that power to take it mold whatever life that you want, whatever life that you want. I was hiking the other day and um, I was hiking with my boyfriend and we had to break the trail because it was snowed over. And when you break the trail, uh, when, it, when everything's kind of snowed over, there's no like previous footprints. You don't really know where the trail is, but you have to make one. And um, it was funny because I, I took a picture. You probably saw it on Facebook. Yes. Um, when you have to break the trail, you make your own path. That's the path that everyone else is going to take after you because you're, you have the precious foot, footprints and they're going to follow in those footprints. And I was just like, man, like that's kind of how life is. You know, everything's not put out in front of you. Everything's not completely clear, but you have the power to carve a trail out for yourself if you don't like the one that you're taking. I just want people to know that. And that's what's really driving me because I know that I have the power to change my life and mold my life into what I can. And we are not victims of our circumstances. We're not victims of our past. In a way, yes, it does suck whatever happened to you, but you have that choice 
to change it. And I want to share that with people through my adventures. And I'm working on a little project with the outdoors. I don't want to say too much, but uh, I'm working on a little project with the outdoors and uh, a new business, uh, kind of cultivating that and letting people know. But Mm -hmm. that's the one thing that that drives me is like, hey, we all have the power. I want to share it. I want to show you. And you have it too. You just have to be willing to take a hold of it and mold it into what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. So your why is basically empowering others to find their their why and their well-being in their journey and the best Mm -hmm. life that they can can hope for and dream of. Exactly. And that you have the power to make life whatever you want. And every day when you wake up, live life to the fullest, try and do what you can in that moment and don't take it for granted. Mm, Be grateful. Be grateful. Do you do gratitude every day? I'm sure you do because everything you see, you're grateful for, right? Yes, definitely. And it's it's crazy how the more you focus on it, the more you notice it, the more your mind goes straight to it. So right, <laughs> I'll right. just be outside and I'll just be like, man, like this is such a nice <laughs> day. I'm so grateful for these trees that are like providing me shade. I'm so grateful for the rain and the snow. It's a very, I'll, I'll just be like a little kid outside. Yeah. It's so <laughs> like, true. Oh, this is so cool. Yes. <laughs> I'm so happy that I live here. I'm so happy I can experience this. I'm so happy I can see this. Right. Do you find that people look at you weird when you say these things? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to be mindful. Sometimes people are not ready to hear our mm-hmm. gratitude and the way we perceive through our pain, because we went through so much pain, we really experience joy in a different level, like we said before. And people are not connecting with that. So we have to be also mindful who we share our gratitude moments with. And sometimes it's just for us to notice. And it's just for us to be in gratitude and live gratitude, right? And mm-hmm. and you do that all the time so beautifully, really so, so beautifully. And I love watching your journey. I love seeing your posts about nature and your depth. You're You're really a deep person. I think you're like, I wouldn't say, I, I would say like you're like a 50 year old soul <laughs> that figured out so much in life and went through it and you got to such a stage of comfort and um, love of who you are and who you're evolving into. And, and in no shape or form are you okay with where you're at now. You still want to move mm-hmm. forward. You're constantly mm-hmm. evolving and constantly changing and, and moving forward and you're in the growth constantly. And, mm-hmm. and I'm so honored to have met you through social media, even though you disconnected. <laughs> just, just notice that by the way, if not for social media, you would be in Colorado, I'll be in New York and we would have never met and you would have never inspired me and you would have never been on my show to inspire others. So just, we have to give credit where credit is due. So social media can, can really be a struggle and destroy. And then social media can also bring amazing people together to empower others and to help others. So I'm happy you're back on social media. How was it like, what was it like to break away for six months from social media? You didn't do anything, nothing? Um, I went, I was in nature a lot. I went on a lot of hikes. I, I went back to my roots and meditated a lot more. I found that I disconnected from those things a little bit. I just got extreme clarity, extreme mm-hmm. clarity. I, I blocked out all the noise because that's like, if the noise gets too much, I can tell and I have to like knock it down a few notches so I can like get back on that level of clarity. And I had just been going, going, going with my business and everything else at that time that uh, I kind of felt like I kind of lost my why and I lost my clarity. Mm-hmm. And that's something that is my compass, you know? So without that, I was just really, really lost. I was like, why am I doing this? What's the end result? Am I happy? Am I not happy? And um, when I was off the social media for six months, ooh, like that first week, it was just so nice to kind of only have my thoughts. Because when you're scrolling through social media, you know, you see everyone else's status updates, you see their uh, things that they're posting on their page, and you internalize that. And you take that in and it kind of kind of like muddles up your energy a little bit. And I just had my own clear energy for a straight six months. And I was able to just get so much clarity on a lot of things. And I ended up, you know, kind of taking a pause from my podcast business 
and um, the path that I was currently going down and I took a new path and it, it really just helped me figure out like what I wanted to do next. And sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you got to block out the noise, get clear mm. and, you know, then take a step after that. And then if that happens again, you know, you always have that tool in mm -hmm. your pocket, you know, let's get clear again. And it's it's not a bad thing, you know, people, it happens. It happens. You're just going, going, going. You don't realize that, like, hey, I need to take a little bit of a clarity break. I just mm -hmm. need to disconnect from social media. I'll probably do it again in the future, you know, just, just so I can have that that extra strength of, like, okay, I've disconnected. What do I want to do next? And it's very helpful. I, I loved every second of it. I was sad to go. I was sad to leave. A lot of people were sad to see me go, but it was for myself. And I was just like, I got to do this, guys. And I came back and I was really excited and happy to be back. But I was also really happy that I did it because mm -hmm. I came back with like so much, so many answers. Was it I was, was it like an addiction that you're like, you crave, let's say you say, I'm not going to eat sugar and you crave the sugar or you want a, uh, a chocolate or that's my addictions, chocolates and, and sugar. And you're like, oh, I just want to check in. I just want to see what's with my friends. I just want to yeah. see. So, did you have those moments? I did. It usually lasts for like the first week, week and a half, two weeks. Uh, and then it, it dies down after that. Because uh, we're so used to checking our phones all the time, mm -hmm. I kind of had to uh, turn that off. I deleted all my apps, and sometimes I would just like open my phone and like scroll and be like, "Oh yeah, I don't have Facebook or Instagram." And I right. shut my phone off and like put it down. <laughs> right. But I'd have those like uh, times where I just like pick up my phone and do that and be like, "Oh yeah," you know. And after a while, it just looks just like, okay. I don't have it anymore. Don't need to pick up my phone. And my brain kind of unlearns that that gesture of like scrolling. And uh, I, I started replacing that with like reading and I started replacing that with like hiking. And then when I got back on social media, I was like, okay, I don't want to like have one thing out of balance. So I really, really focused on balancing it mm -hmm. with everything that I was already doing from my cleanse. So I mm -hmm. wouldn't go back to social media and have the same problem of being on it too much. I wanted to balance it with my hiking and my, you know, my wellness routine and my morning routine. Right. That's amazing. That's really fascinating. I would love to have you as a mentor on our mastermind that we're starting in, <laughs> in uh, two weeks, because I think you, there's, even if, listen, my dream is to have Brene Brown on it, <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, but I think there's no one that can really teach better than someone that walked the path, you know, Definitely. and you actually did the work and you did the exercises and you know the challenges that come along the way and you know the voices that people are going to hear and the, and and where they give up and I, you're so incredibly intuitive and deep and kind to yourself and you you just have what it what it takes to heal and I would love to for share your with your with my community and maybe you can help them grow so we'll talk about that by the way the mastermind mm -hmm. every month new new people are going to come onto the mastermind and it doesn't have to be a constant thing, but every month we work on something specific in a specific area that moves the needle and we deep dive into it. We do exercises and we go into the next level and we acquire that and then we implement something else. I would love to have you on board because yeah. I think you are a treasure to the world, a real treasure and a oh. real symbol yeah. of we can do it from young. We have the power inside us. We don't need a lot of people tell me, but I don't have money. I don't have resources. I don't have a therapist. I don't have this. Yes, it's really hard. And I'm not going to minimize it. I'm telling you now, I was mm. not a quarter as strong as Selena. I needed mentors. I needed therapy. I needed healers. I needed support. I needed community. I needed family. I That's what I needed. I was not as strong as Selena. I was not. But Selena is here to teach us that we have all the tools inside us that can guide mm -hmm. us and can lead us. And and for all the people that say, I don't have resources, Selena is going to teach us how to be our own resources and our own GPS map and listen Definitely. and how we can block out the noise and how can we say, yes, there are negative people around us and it's frustrating, it's annoying and it's hard, but how can we be our best friend and how can we be our biggest ally to our recovery and what can we do to focus on what we could do versus on what we can't do. Selena was focused on what could, she could change versus what she could not change. And when she was focused on what she could change, that's when the things that she could not change changed alone naturally. <laughs> 
So yeah. that was the the biggest teaching moment of this episode. I I so adore your your mission, who you are, your mindset, your passion, your journey. Thank you. I'm inspired, constantly inspired. Go check out Selena. What's your What's your Facebook account? I don't know it by heart. Um, it's just Selena Celeste, and um, it's Selena with a C, C E L I N A, and then Celeste. And my Instagram is Selena Celeste underscore as well. Um, but yeah, that's those are my handles. Um, I'm a photographer. And I also hike a lot and I also am getting into my fitness journey a little bit more. So I have a little bit of that dabbled in there. Uh, it's all, it's all my, my journey, mm. <laughs> my constant journey, but yeah. Yeah. Are you also on Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. My Instagram handle is uh, Selena Celeste underscore. Why is your name Celeste if your last name is Wasson? Um, that's something that I kind of... It, it was a name that I was very like pulled towards mm-hmm. and I just kind of adopted that as like my, my surname, I guess mm-hmm. you could say kind of mm-hmm. like, kind of like a name that, that speaks to you. Mm-hmm. Um, Celeste was something that I am very, I'm very fascinated with like space and, you know, astronomy, stuff like that. So that was something that was like very inviting to me. So I adapted that name because of that. And I, I found like meaning in that. And I was like, I want Lena Sless to be my name. That sounds kind of cool. Rolls off the tongue really well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I like that. So you chose your energy to your name, which is really, really mm-hmm. good. I'm going to leave off with one last question that I ask everyone. Selena, what does hope mean to you? Hope. Hope means to me. I would say hope hope for me was my my perception of what my life could be. That gave me hope. Realizing your potential and realizing what you can do past your limitations, past your, you know, your trauma, the things that broke you, that that was what gave me hope because I, I could see it. It was very far away. It was very buried underneath a bunch of stuff that I had to dig through to get to it. And I'm still, I, I have to say, I have to be honest, I'm still not 100% there. But um, hope is just something for me that is the knowing and the faith and the trust that you will get to where you want to be and who you want to be if you put in the work and the time and the effort. Right. And, and know that you can. The knowing and knowing that you can. Selena, thank you so much for sharing your journey, your wisdom, your courage and your insights and your strength with the world. I am in visualize, I visualize you on a stage one day sharing this with hundreds of thousands of people because you really did the work early on and you did it on your own and you chose life. You really chose the path to healing. So thank you so much for joining us and we'll, we will see you very soon. I'm going to come. I keep yeah. on every time she posts, by the way. What do I say almost every time you post? I can't wait to hike with you. I want to hate hike with Selena. I hate hiking. I'm not good at it, but I'm going to come to Colorado to hike with Selena. She's going to make it happen for me. She's going to inspire me to take that one step towards the fear of hiking. I have also a fear of heights. So Mm, you're going to inspire me to conquer (laughs) my fear and do something. But I love scenery. I love Mm -hmm. nature, but I don't like doing the work to get there. So the mountains will definitely make, I, I used to be the same way a little bit. And once you're, once you're out there and you see everything, it just makes you want to get better. I used to be afraid of heights too. And then I got on some sketchy, sketchy parts of hikes before. And I've been like, I got to get to my destination. Got a second. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It, it makes you very strong, but yeah. I would love to have you. I, I know so many places to take you already. I think I'm going to do it in May. In May? Okay. In May. Is that a good time? Mm-hmm. I, don't like I don't like snow. I don't like snow. You don't like snow? No. All right hate snow. I already know where to bring you. (laughs) Yay. Okay. So guys, watch out because we're going to go hiking. (laughs) Anyway, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you for listening to this very, very, very important conversation. I think this is the core to healing, to moving the needle. And I'm going to be speaking to Selena now about a mastermind and see how she can help us 
build this community and, and, and move the needle for others that are looking to empower themselves, that they know that they want to change. They just don't know how to make the change happen. So thank you again. Look for us on Hope to Recharge Community reach us over there. If you will be so kind to leave us a review, leave us a review on iTunes. It helps us. It helps the world find us. It helps others that are struggling find this very important conversation. We enjoy hearing if you enjoyed and what your take away was from these conversations. So drop us a review if you don't mind. You can email us. You can join us on Facebook. You can join us on Instagram. You know how to find us. And if you want to join our Hope to Recharge Mastermind and be one of our powerhouse moving the needle towards mental health, please come join us. That's on hope to recharge.com forward slash mastermind. See you next time. Thank you for joining us and taking the time to listen. I really appreciate it. Please hit the subscribe button so you can hear further episodes. If you are listening to us on iTunes, please leave feedback and ratings below. Let us know if there's any topic that you would like to hear from us in the future. Bye till next time.